hello awesome person welcome back to my youtube channel my name is vera and as you may or may not have guessed from the title of this video you're watching right now i love traveling i absolutely love 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 traveling yes and um sometime this year the wind of adventure blew me to one of the most beautiful west african countries and that is ghana yes I went to Ghana guys and after the Ghana trip a lot of people reached out to me requesting for the places I visited more like my itinerary right so I decided to film this video to share my full seven day itinerary in Ghana so this video is going to be helpful to you if you plan on visiting Ghana as a tourist yes and maybe you don't have anywhere in mind to go to I'm here to help you yes i'm going to be spilling my secrets free of charge is it really a secret i'm not really sure but yeah i'm just going to um share it with you so grab your notepad you might want to write down the names of these places i am mentioning yeah. i'm going to be sharing them in days the first day was a Sunday, so I'm going to be doing day one Sunday, day two Monday. You get the drift, right? Okay, so if you're feeling this already, if you're getting excited about this video, please do well to click on that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's dive right into this video. Okay, moving on. So this is what happened, right? Um, before I left for Ghana, I did... A little bit of research right i checked out places i could visit in ghana and um, i wrote them down now what i didn't know was that most of these places are really really far away from each other but that's not a problem right so you could have a tentative list of places you would love to visit and this particular list can be reviewed in my own case i fixed places for day one day two day three day four and the rest of the days and i also included a rest day yes you want to rest as much as you want to explore right all right let's go day one the first thing on my list for day one was departure from nigeria and arrival in ghana you'd have to arrive ghana first before you can explore places in ghana right so this also goes for you i mean departing from whatever country you're departing from and arrival in ghana number two on the list for day one is changing money yes you have to change your currency whether it's dollars which is the most preferred option yes to ghana cities which is the currency used in ghana the exchange rate at the airport was pretty fair so you don't really have to worry about much you can always change your money at the airport please 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 change enough money because you don't know whether your bank or your cards are actually going to work in Ghana. In our own case, we changed enough money that we felt was going to last us uh, to the end of our trip. Yes, that's what we did. Number three item on the list for day one was food. Yep, we were pretty famished. This is because we left Nigeria very early and we left Nigeria early so that we would have enough time to explore on day one. If we had arrived in the evening, um, I don't think we would have still been able to explore. That would have been day two, right? Yes. So we had to get some food to eat. I wrote Kozo GH. Um, I, I don't know if that's the way it's pronounced. But then we couldn't make it to that particular restaurant. So instead, we went to Accra Mall and then ate at chicken in one of the restaurants in there now there are lots of restaurants inside Accra Mall and um, you can always eat at any restaurant right you can use Google to search for restaurants near you and that really does help a lot number four on our list was exploring Volta region now we really had no time to waste so we moved to Volta region now um in my own itinerary i did mention stopping by a hotel to rest that's because we had people we had awesome friends who came to pick us so our box was pretty much in the trunk of the car yeah 
<laughs> so we moved straight to Volta region. Now Volta region has lots and lots of tourist attractions, right? And from Accra to the Volta region, I think it took about two hours or so. I can't really remember the exact number of hours, but then um, it took a while for us to get there. And number five on the list was Bridgeview Resort. Now Bridgeview Resort is in Volta region. Yes. So what you want to do is put all the places in a particular region um, that you want to see maybe on a particular day. You don't want to, you know, go to a particular place and then go back there if you don't really have much time on your hands. In our own case, seven days, only seven days. So Bridgeview Resort is one of the beautiful resorts in Ghana's Volta region. And there's a catch. Why else would Vera have Bridgeview Resort on her list? I didn't actually stay there. I went there because you can view Adomi Bridge from Bridgeview Resort. I heard the place is most times fully booked. And if you want to book to stay there, you have to book way, way, way ahead. And um, it's quite pricey. I don't know how much, but then you can always check online to find out. But why I went there was just to view Adomi Bridge from the top of Bridgeview Resort. Number six on day one list, um, Adomi Bridge. I mean, after viewing Adomi Bridge from Bridgeview Resort, we went down to see Adomi Bridge itself. It's a tourist attraction as well, and it's just really, really close to Bridgeview Resort. Number seven, Lake Volta and Akosombo Dam. Yes, you can do both of those ones at the same time, and it's still in the same region yes so we went to um lake volta and um went on a boat cruise sort of yeah it was really really amazing and then as you're going on the boat cruise in lake volta you're going to come across akosombo dam so you're seeing two places in one yes you're going to have an amazing time if you go to these places trust me after that, I was really tired. I mean, we really spent. And then we started heading back to Accra, Ghana. Yes, that took another, I think, two hours or so. But then when we arrived at Accra, that was when we checked in to the hotel. So we checked into Urbano Hotel. Urbano Hotel is in Osu, Oxford Street. And why did I go there? I went there because there's this huge I love Accra sign in front of the hotel and I knew I wanted taking pictures in front of the place. So uh, why not just lodge there? Yep, that's what I did. So um, I stayed there for the first day and that's how day one was spent. Day two. What better way to spend your second day in Ghana than exploring Accra itself? Yes, Accra, Ghana. So that's what we decided to do. First things first was prepare and step out. I took some photos in front of the I love Accra sign at Urbano Hotel. And then the second thing on the list was see the Independence Square, the Independence Arch and the Black Star Gate. Trust me, if you're walking around and taking photos, this is going to take your time. You never know how much time you're going to be spending in a tourist attraction. You could say you're going to spend two hours, but then you end up spending four hours. Yes, because it gets all exciting. I loved taking photos at the Black Star Gate. You would love it too. I mean, what better way to mark your attendance in Ghana than taking photos in front of the Black Star Gate? Yep. Right. So after that, we moved to have lunch in a restaurant called Buka Restaurant. We used restaurants near me and um, I already saw the restaurant while we're searching for places to eat while in Ghana and it was beautiful going there to eat. It's a really, really beautiful place. So Buka restaurant is still in Osu. Yes, it's still in Osu. And um, after that, we went back to the hotel to rest. That's still Urbano Hotel. After resting in the hotel, we stepped out in the evening to stroll around also Oxford Street to see what it has to offer. You might want to add this to your itinerary because you never know what you're going to discover. I realized that Osu Oxford Street is a beautiful tourist destination. I mean, there are places where you can get souvenirs and there are lots and lots of amazing places there where you could always check out. Just take a walk. 
don't use a cup take a walk around the place and you're going to absolutely love 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 it after that we stopped at a restaurant still at osu oxford street to eat and then we retired for the day the day was pretty exhausting but it feels like we didn't really do much yes day three since we're still in osu oxford street and still around the osu area we decided to explore the osu castle still in accra ghana yes osu castle is a really beautiful castle but the story behind it uh, is somewhat gory but then it got to a point where it was used to mark the liberation of Ghana and the president once lived there yeah it's a whole lot of stories so when you go to Osu Castle you're going to hear the stories for yourself but that was number one on our day three itinerary after the tour at Osu Castle we were so exhausted I think it took about three hours or so we were super exhausted so we had to get food to eat at a restaurant i don't even remember the name of the restaurant i was really famished i didn't care to check yes the next thing on the list was go back to urbano hotel and move to a different hotel now we moved from urbano to a different hotel because we wanted to check out you know what other places look like and also because the rate wasn't really favorable for us and the other one was kind of favorable the one at central hotel was favorable and we had complimentary breakfast yep it was so so awesome so we moved from urbano to central hotel and then rested for the day i mean osu castle on its own is i mean call it a day right <laughs> but then it could be different for you you might have other things to do on your list please 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 go ahead and do them as far as you are not burning yourself out so we're done with day three now we're moving to day four for day four we decided to visit jamestown accra if you're not a Ghanaian and you've been reading about ghana reading about tourist attractions and all you would know that one of the popular places you get to hear about is jamestown jamestown as a whole and i explored it for myself it was so amazing visiting jamestown to learn about you know history somehow <laughs> yeah so the first thing on our itinerary on day four was having breakfast yes we had breakfast in central hotel where we lodged and which was a complimentary breakfast here and uh, yeah so after the breakfast we moved to jamestown accra um at jamestown you're going to see lots and lots of tourist attractions we saw jamestown lighthouse we saw fort james prison and we also went to jamestown fishing village so that was just like part of the jamestown tour this took lots and lots of hours and at the jamestown fishing village we had an amazing time we went on a boat ride sort of <laughs> and you know it was just beautiful after our tour of jamestown we're pretty pretty much exhausted so the next thing on that list was going back to the hotel to freshen up and rest Part of what we wanted doing during the rest period was to go swim in the hotel swimming pool, which we did, and it was so relaxing. After that, we ordered food, ate, and then rested. That was pretty much day four. Now, you have to note that you might not be able to do lots and lots and lots of regions in a day. You could just concentrate on doing one thing. I realized that we spent most of our time in Accra because we later realized that all the places we had on our list, like Cape Coast Castle, Elimina Castle, Willy Waterfalls, and um, even, um, even the National Park were really um, far, somewhat far from Accra, and we didn't really have much time on our hands to, you know, go explore those ones so we left it out for whenever we go back to ghana please note that you're not going to be able to do everything on your list there are some times you'd have to cut some things out and there are some times you have to bring new things in so try as much as possible to be flexible with your itinerary moving on to day five day five was adventure day somebody say adventure yes day five was basically breakfast in the morning and then we headed to ghana's eastern region to see 
Boti Falls. I have uploaded that video. I think I'm going to put the video up here for you to watch and learn all you need to learn about Boti Falls and you know get some insightful information before you decide to visit. So Boti Falls is in Ghana's eastern region. It took about two hours from Accra to um, Koforidua and then another one hour to Boti. That was like three hours in total. So just know that if you're going to Boti Falls, you're going to spend a full day like a whole day when you get to Boti you have to realize that you're going to hike for about 45 minutes to get to the other side attractions at Boti like the umbrella rock the three-headed palm tree um the ancient cave the tree on a rock and other beautiful stuff yes mm -hmm. another 45 minutes so it's a whole it's a whole crazy journey but if you're an adventurous person you can add that to your list of places to visit. If you're not up for that adventure, please go to a beach, relax, um, rest. Did I go to any of them? I think I just went to the one at Jamestown, which is not really beach, beach, like a luxury vacation beach is, you know, one of those places. <laughs> yeah, so there are lots of things you can add to your itinerary. I'm just telling you mine, right? So after we finished from Boti, it was really late. So we just headed back to Accra. That was another three hours journey and um, rested for the day. Day six was pretty much a rest day. I mean, after all this up and down movement, touristy activities and things, we realized we not realized we knew we had to rest i mean there was a rest day already accounted for in the itinerary right so that was our day six so from the morning of day six we basically slept in and woke up later to go for lunch we went to have lunch at asanka local one of the things we did while in ghana was trying local ghanaian delicacies i ate wache and goat meat uh, my husband ate light soup with fufu there were lots of amazing things we ate in ghana and oh yeah i think he, he ate i think he ate palm nut soup at some point yeah so we went to asanka local basically asanka local is a restaurant in osu and you might want to add that to the list of places you want to check out right you can go there eat food they have lots of local ghanaian meals so you can check that out after that we moved to the Accra Arts and Crafts Market where we toured the whole market, bought souvenirs, I played drums. I'm going to put the video up here so you can check it out. I played drums at the market. I learned how to play it there and I played it very well. Yeah, if I just say so myself. <laughs> yeah, so it was an awesome experience. And after that, we got back to the hotel and rested. Day seven was the day of our departure. And our flight was for uh, evening, I would say. So we still had enough time in the morning to explore. So the first thing we did was have breakfast, pack up our boxes and put them in the trunk of the vehicle to the next adventure point, which was Ebri Botanical Gardens. Ebri Botanical Gardens is in Ghana's eastern region, just um, before Boti Falls. Yeah, you have to you know go further to get to Boti Falls, but then it's still in Ghana's eastern region. If you have seen the beautiful photos of the entrance of this botanical garden online, please raise your hands up. Yeah. I mean, why would you go to Ghana and you don't stop by every botanical gardens? <laughs> oh my God. It was so amazing that we were able to, you know, go there. Um, we toured the whole place, took amazing photos. I mean, I have a photo at the entrance of the garden too. Yeah, I have one. I'm going to show you right now on the screen. I look so cute here. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, after Ebri Botanical Gardens, we moved to Pedrasse Valley Resort. Yes, it's a beautiful place. I never knew about that. Um, I really just found out about that on that particular day. That's why I said things are going to get, um, you know, um, introduced to your itinerary at some point and then you have to try as much as possible to be flexible to accommodate these things or not accommodate them depending on you know you're going to you're going to know what your day looks like what your time looks like um so we went to pedro Valley valley resort 
and we checked out their petting zoo which is so beautiful and that was it from Pedro State Valley Resort we moved to the airport and that was our departure from Ghana yes so that's basically it I didn't really cover everywhere in Ghana I would have loved to visit Willy Waterfall which is said to be the highest in West Africa I would have loved to go to Kakum National Park um, to go on their canopy walk like the one in Lagos that's at Lekki Conservation Center in Nigeria um, I would have loved to go to Cape Coast yeah to explore Cape Coast as a whole Elimina Castle and you know all other beautiful places but I think I'm going to be able to do this some other time because I mean I had only seven days and I couldn't possibly explore the whole of Ghana for that seven days i hope i mentioned some places from my itinerary that you would love to visit if you really loved this video or if this video has helped you you know have a direction on your next visit to ghana please 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 don't forget to like the video share it with other people i mean yeah you have to and also click on the subscribe button subscribe to my youtube channel thank you very much that would make me so so happy so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.